Senators, it is with deep regret that I inform the Senate of the death on the 25th of November last year of Bin Chen, a senator for the state of Victoria from 1999 to 2005, and I acknowledge members of his family in the President's Gallery this afternoon. I call the Leader of the Government in the Senate. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, I seek leave to move a motion relating to the death of Senator Sabin Chen. Leave is granted. Senator Cormann. Uh, I thank the Senate. Uh, Mr. President, I move that the Senate records its deep sorrow uh, at the death on 25 November 2019 of Sabin Chen, former Senator for Victoria, places on record its gratitude uh, for his service in the Parliament and the nation. Um, and extends uh, its profound sympathies to his family in their bereavement. Uh, Mr. President, uh, you know, we were all deeply saddened when we heard the news uh, late last year that our uh, former um, friend and colleague, uh, Sabin uh, Chen, had passed away. Um, it was sudden and unexpected, and even at the age of 78, uh, Sabin had so much more still to give. At the time of his passing, Sabin was uh, as active in the community and as passionate about multiculturalism as ever. Throughout his life, he worked tirelessly to bridge cultural divides. Sabin was devoted to uniting Australia's many communities because he believed the cultures that make up our country are stronger as one. And he was, of course, right. We have lost uh, one of the guardian angels of multiculturalism uh, in Australia, as he was specifically affectionately known as. I didn't personally have the pleasure of knowing Sabin, but I wish I had. In a touching tribute after his passing, a Chinese-Australian advocate um, and writer expressed her gratitude in her dear, to her dear Uncle Bin. She said his mentoring and support of the next generation of leaders will be remembered forever by her and so many others, which speaks volume about the vast and powerful impact that Sabin has had on Australia's multicultural community, particularly Chinese Australians. We should all strive to be more like Uncle Bin. Like many of us, in fact, like both the leader of the opposition and myself, Sabin was born overseas. He came to Australia in the 1950s on a student visa with no promise of being able to remain here after his studies because of the then white Australia policy. But he saw a future here and he pursued it. Sabin graduated with a master's degree in town planning at the University of Sydney and thanks to the efforts of successive governments to dismantle the white Australia policy, he received Australian citizenship in 1971. As a son of a Republic of China diplomat, his uh, innate interest in politics led him to join the Liberal Party in 1972. He volunteered on the campaign of then Prime Minister William McMahon. As a town planner, he was deeply passionate about community development and bringing people together, but he knew he could make a more significant difference by putting his energies into politics. In 1999, Sabin entered the Senate representing Victoria and in the process became the first Asian-born migrant elected to our federal parliament. His ascension to this place came in the face of growing hostility from some quarters of politics towards Asian Australians. That did not faze him. He often told those he mentor, mentored that, and I'm quoting him, you had to be in it to change it. Sabin's presence here undeniably helped create a parliament that better reflected our diverse community, and it wasn't long before uh, my friend and colleague across the chamber, um, Senator Wong, joined him as another Asian Australian in our federal parliament. In his first speech, Sabin highlighted the special significance of his election. He said it served as a reinforcing symbol and a call to those who are Australians by choice that they belong. It was, he said, an act of affirmation by the people of Australia that every Australian, regardless of his or her cultural 
or historic background stands equal in the eyes of his or her fellow citizens. Uh, Sabine was a symbol of multicultural success in Australian politics, a figure of hope and aspiration for his beloved Chinese Australian community. He gave people who, like him, have come to Australia confidence that they have a role and place in our democracy, the feeling that they belong. Sabin performed diligently during his term in the Senate. He played an influential role in migration policy, sitting on several committees, including chairing the Government Members' Policy Committee on Immigration and Multicultural Affairs between 2000 and 2004. His presence within the Liberal Party provided unique and valuable insights to Australia's engagement with the region, especially East Asia. After his retirement from politics, Sabin continued to promote the value of multiculturalism, amplifying the voices of those who are not readily heard. He became a commissioner of the Victorian Multicultural Commission in 2015 and a member of the Australian Multicultural Council in 2018. Sabin was also made an adjunct professor at Swinburne, Swinburne uh, University of Technology, pursuing his deep interest in Chinese-Australian history, which he believed should be treated as an integral part of Australian history. In his life, Sabin punctured the bamboo ceiling and through his efforts has left behind a more diverse and inclusive Australia. It is fitting that his family has established a foundation in his honour to continue his work and ensure his legacy lives on. The guardian angel of multiculturalism will always be with us. Uh, to Sabin's uh, wife Pauline and children Jacinta and Adrian on behalf of uh, the government and the Australian Senate and in tribute to a much loved man I join with my colleagues in this place in offering my sincerest condolences. Uh, May Sabin rest in peace. Senator Wong. Thank you, Mr. President. And I rise on behalf of the opposition to express our condolences following the passing of former Senator Sabin Chen at the age of 78. And I convey at the outset the opposition's and my personal condolences to his family and friends. And in particular, I extend our sympathies to his daughter Jacinta and other family members who are with us in the President's Gallery today and to members of the community who have joined us. I also want to express my personal gratitude for their gracious invitation to attend his funeral, which I regret I could not take up. Bin Chen and I came from very different political traditions, but we did share an affinity that went beyond party membership. We shared the experience of being Asians in Australia at a time when that was much less common than it is today. And we shared the experience of being the first Asian Australians elected to the Australian Parliament. And that meant a great deal to both of us. I think we have all, were always deeply conscious of the responsibility of being the first, of representing, of course, all of the community, but the additional expectation inherent in representing the parts of the community who hadn't seen their like as political representatives before because representation does matter. To be it, you have to be able to see it. And that was something Senator Chen understood, and as do I. So we knew that for the many Australians who had never before seen themselves represented in this place, having people in public life, having people in the parliament who looked like them or whose experience mirrored their own could have a huge impact could change not only people's lives, but more, perhaps more importantly, their perception of what was possible. This was a privilege and a responsibility that Bin Chen carried with dignity and with grace. In this Senate, he spoke about how important multiculturalism is to our nation. He saw its nation-building power. He built bridges and changed hearts and minds. He confronted those who were sceptical and helped them find a more understanding perspective. This was particularly important at that time in Australian political history, as my colleague and friend Senator Cormann has referenced. This was a period of time where Asian Australians were very much a public focus. 
He said in his own words, my preference is to build rather than to pull down. Build rather than to pull down. We could do with more like him today. That a humble man like Tabin Chen was able to achieve election as a senator speaks in part to the power of education. Born in China in 1941, it was education that brought the son of a diplomatic family to Australia in the late 1950s after living in several, several different international locations. And like my dad, who would come to Adelaide as a Colombo Plan scholar to uh, study architecture in the 1960s, Zabin Chen found a place in the Australian tertiary education system at the University of Sydney. He remained in Australia and made his first contribution to civic life in our nation as a town planner and policy analyst after graduation. Along the way, he would become an Australian citizen and join the Liberal Party in the early 1970s. I heartily endorse the former, but I am more reserved about his judgment on the latter. However, the decision he made would set him on a path to our national parliament. Sabin Chen was elected to the Senate for Victoria in 1998 and served for one term, retiring with the expiration of his term on the 30th of June 2005. And his election spoke to the power of change in our country over the previous three decades of change in attitudes and change in laws that would dismantle the white Australia framework. A structure that had served to prevent people like us and our families from full participation in Australian society. Accompanying this was also a change in outlook. As we transformed from monocultural outposts of the British Empire to a diverse multicultural nation engaged in our region. Sabin Chen recognised this in his first speech in the Senate, identifying these changes as pivotal to Australia's growth and prosperity. And he also spoke about his support for reconciliation with Indigenous Australians. As a senator, he served on a number of Senate committees, including Community Affairs, Environment Communications, IT and the Arts, of which he was a member for five years. And he also held positions appropriately on the Joint Standing Committees on Migration and also on treaties. In fact, his membership of the Treaties Committee spanned the entirety of his term of service in the Senate. And it was a time where that was a very busy committee, uh, given the US Free Trade Agreement. After Parliament, Tsabin Chen's unifying work continued, both formally and informally. I particularly make reference to his roles as a member of the Victorian Multicultural Commission and as a member of the ministerially appointed Australian Multicultural Council. Of this latter appoint, appointment, uh, his friends and family should be justly proud. In the meeting of 20th, the meeting of 20th November 2019 in Sydney was his last official meeting, just days before his tragic death. Bin Chen was also consistent in his support and encouragement of Chinese Australian community groups. Mr President, throughout his career as a senator and in his life, Tsai Bin Chen demonstrated that every Australian, regardless of cultural or ethnic background, stands equal in our society, equal in rights, equal in capability, and equal in opportunities to contribute to the growth and development of the nation for prosperity and for harmony. Ensuring that this continues to be the case, now and for those who come to call Australia home in the future from when it, wherever they come, must be our continuing project. As we honour his legacy, it is a project all of us should recommit to. And as we mourn his passing, once again, I extend my deepest sympathies to Tsabin's family and friends. Senator Scar. Mm. Thank you, Mr. President. I only met Zabin Chen once, but he left a profoundly positive impression upon me. I had remembered the significance of his election at the time, especially at a time when there were people in our, in my home state of Queensland, who were putting quite poisonous ideas into the political realm. His election was of great significance. I had the privilege of spending an afternoon with him 
on 30 March 2019 at the commemoration of the memorial to the Amoy Shepherds. And I draw the Senate's attention to the fact that Mr Graham Perrett, the member for Morton, who also happens to be my local member, uh, we, may be on different, we may be in different parties, but in matters such as this we're absolutely on the same page. He had brought to people's attention the issue of the Amoy Shepherds in St George in the Boulogne region of Western Queensland. In 1848, when a region in China was suffering from great famine, shepherds were brought out from China, indentured labour, on five-year contracts to work in Queensland. 300 shepherds came to Queensland and went west to the St George region to act as shepherds for 450,000 head of sheep. In 1906, the records, their names, were destroyed in a fire at a Shire Council Hall. In the early 1970s, the cemetery, which was predominantly wooden grave sites, was destroyed by fire. And this came to uh, the member for Morton's attention, and he thought that the issue needed to be rectified. And he was right in thinking that. And so a memorial committee, the St George Chinese Memorial Committee, was established to establish a memorial to the Amoy Shepherds, uh, led by some great Queenslanders uh, and headed up by a good friend of both of ours, Mr Jack Sun. And with the support of David Littleproud, the member for Maranoa, the memorial was built to the Amoy Shepherds. And so it came to 30 March 2019 for the commemoration of the memorial. Now, it took six and a half hours for me to drive from Brisbane to St George for the commemoration, and the member for Morton was there as well. Bin Chen drove 14 hours overnight from Melbourne to attend the commemoration. 14 hours overnight from Melbourne. That was what the significance of that commemoration meant to him. Now, as is probably the tradition amongst lost travellers, we both found ourselves at the St George service station seeking directions to find the St George Cemetery, because we were both a little bit early. And uh, we looked at each other and immediately recognised our uh, mutual interests and values and said we must be going to the same place, which in fact we were. So before the main group arrived, we attended the cemetery, just the two of us, and discussed the memorial. And then we had two hours uh, prior to the ceremony where we could sit down together. And can I tell you, Mr President, as someone who at that stage was seeking election to this place, it was a great and deep honour to have that opportunity to sit down with Bin Chen and to receive his wisdom, his guidance and his thoughts about the significance of the role I was about to undertake. After that discussion, we returned to the cemetery for the commemoration. And I want to read to you the words on that memorial because I think they are significant, especially considering the background of Bin Chen and how he came to this country from China. The memorial states, in memoriam, to the young men who around 1850 left the famine in Amoy to become indentured shepherds, and those who in the 1880s drifted here in itinerant coolie gangs after the Palmer River gold had gone. These sojourners never earned enough to return to the families left behind in their ancestral villages. Here now they lie, silent witnesses to the settlement of this region. And there's also a poem on the memorial, 1,300-year-old poem from Lee Bai, and it says this. The moonlight shines bright beyond my bed. I wonder if there's frost on the ground outside. I raise my head to see the moon. 
I lay down my head and yearn, yearn for my ancestral village. After the ceremony, Bin had to return to Melbourne. He had a long trip ahead of him. But it was an absolute honour, a privilege, to share that time and those moments with him. In his maiden speech, he said this. As we enter the 21st century, the world we are in is, in many respects, a place of even greater uncertainty. In this world, Australia, with the advantage of our geography and our history, has the chance to become a source of hope and an example for all to follow. We have a responsibility to make multiculturalism. That means an equal right and opportunity, opportunity for every citizen to contribute to the growth and development of our common community, work for Australia and contribute to world peace and prosperity. Those were Bing Chin's values. Those are my values. Those are the member for Morton's values. And those are the values of both the Leader of the Government and the Senate and I'm sure the Leader of the Opposition in the Senate. His final words, his final words in that maiden speech were these. And you can you can understand the significance of these words in the context of his attending that commemoration and, and contemplating the plight of the Amoy shepherds, because he himself had come from China. And he said in his maiden speech, I say to my father, when I left home you told me you are going to a new country to live among strangers. Always remember who you are and where you came from. Always behave in such a way that those who knew you will not be disgraced because the new people that you live with will judge them by you. You should always realise where you are going and who you can be. Always strive for purpose so that the expectation of those among whom you will live shall not be disappointed because they will be judged by your success or not. And his final words in that maiden speech were, Father, I hope that I have met your wishes. Well, Mr President, I'm sure Bin Chen exceeded the wishes of his father and family. He has done himself, he has done his father, he has done his family, he has done his country, and he's done this Senate great honour. Senator Fioravanti Wells. President, I rise to uh, make some comments uh, uh, and to pay tribute to a gentleman, uh, a real gentleman. Bin Chen was a wonderful person and somebody that, uh, when I joined the Senate, he was leaving as I was joining. So our time here together, there was only a very short uh, overlap between the periods. But um, I know that uh, when Bin Chen left this place, he continued his time of service. And with half of us born overseas, or having at least one parent born overseas, um, Bin Chen reflected very much um, the face of today contemporary mainstream Australia. But as has been said before, at the time when he did come to this place, uh, there weren't many people of diverse background uh, serving uh, in this place. And in many ways, um, he uh, lay uh, the path for people um, such as myself from different backgrounds uh, to come to this place and to serve uh, one's country. Uh, when you looked at Bin Chen, you would never think that he was 78 because he was such an active person. And he certainly didn't, uh, and I think that uh, there were many years of service left uh, for him, uh, sadly, uh, before he was taken uh, in uh, an accident. Can I pay tribute um, uh, to him, to the work that he did before he came to this place, uh, to the struggles that he and his family uh, went through and to the things that have been uh, acknowledged about his service before. And today, uh, as I said, we remember not only uh, a senator, a senator who contributed uh, to the diversity of this place, but we well and truly respect the gentleman that he always was. Can I, as a Victorian, 
Liberal Senator make, take the rare opportunity to make a brief observation from the chair. I did have the privilege of, of joining with Bin Chen's family and colleagues at the memorial service held at the Melbourne Town Hall. Um, and his standing in the community was reflected in the size and the breadth of those who attended. Uh, public figures, politicians from state and federal, former premiers, ministers of the current state Labor government, leaders of communities, multicultural commissioners uh, and, of course, family and friends. Senator Cormann reminded us of his election uh, in 1999 as the first Asian-born member of parliament, uh, federal parliament, that is. It seems like so long ago because this place would be unimaginable, yet it was also oddly recent in how long it, how long it took to occur. He was always particularly proud of doing this from Victoria and from the Victorian Liberal Party. He did it at a time where, as Senator Wong outlined, uh, Asian migration was the subject of a particularly unpleasant focus in this country. Uh, and he was always proud of being able to engage with people and doing it in a positive way, seeking to persuade rather than be belligerent. He was proud to repel those arguments forcefully but politely. He was proud to work with people like Jeff Kennett, who I remember at the time, um, was a particularly aggressive opponent of those views as he went around the country in 1998 and 1999. And in this sense, he was always a particularly proud Victorian Liberal and a particularly proud Victorian knowing that multiculturalism was part of the fabric of my home state, his home state. Um, he was, he, the, he was always particularly proud to work with those who shared his values across boundaries of communities, across boundaries of politics uh, and across boundaries of states and nations. And as Senator Cormann and Wong, if I could associate myself with those comments, outlined, he saw that diversity as a particularly strong building block for this country. The loss of a family member or friend is always sad, but this was particularly tragic in its swiftness and in its unexpected nature. And personally, as a Victorian Liberal, I express, as I did on the day, my condolences to his family uh, and to his friends and colleagues. I ask honourable senators to join in a moment of silence to signify assent to this motion. The motion is carried. Thank you, Senators.